In this video, we are going to be continuing our standard on angle relationships. This video focuses on alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding angles, and same side interior angles. Parallel lines are lines that never intersect. So pictured here, I have two parallel lines with triangles on them, which is the symbol for uh, to indicate that these two lines are parallel. Sometimes you might see arrows instead of triangles, but typically you'd need some sort of indication that these two lines are parallel. So either it you need to be told or they have to have these symbols on them. You cannot just assume that they are parallel. Next, we have a transversal. A transversal is a line that crosses at least two other lines. So here, my blue line would be the transversal. And as you can see, when I add in a transversal, I have a lot of angles that are formed, which is where our angle relationships are going to come in. And when I'm talking about the inside of the parallel lines, I'm talking about this area right here. And when I talk about the outside of the parallel lines, I'm talking about the exterior. I'm talking about this area right here. So let's go to our angle relationships. The first angle relationship I'm going to talk about is alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are on the opposite sides of the transversal and they are inside the parallel lines. So the angle relationship pairs that I have here that are alternate interior angles are four and six and three and five. Next, I have alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles are on the opposite sides of the transversal, and they are on the outside of the parallel lines. So that would be angles 2 and 7 and angles 1 and 8. Next, I have corresponding angles, and for some reason, this angle relationship is one of the hardest ones for students to grasp. Corresponding angles are on the same position along the transversal and at the same location at each intersection. And so I have a few of those pairs. So two and five are corresponding angles. Four and eight are corresponding angles. One and six are corresponding angles. And three and seven are corresponding angles. Next, reviewing, we have some vertical angles here because we have some crossing lines. So the vertical angles pictured here would be two and three, one and four, five and seven, and six and eight. When you have parallel lines and these angle relationships, then these angle pairs will be congruent or equal. So alternate interior angles are equal when you have parallel lines. Alternate exterior angles are equal when you have parallel lines. Corresponding angles are equal when you have parallel lines. Vertical angles are just equal always. Next, we are going to review supplementary angles. We have several supplementary angles, angle pairs here. So we have one and two that are supplementary, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, two and four, one and three, six and seven, and five and eight are all supplementary pairs. And the last angle relationship that I am going to be going over today is going to be same side interior angles. Same side interior angles are angles that are on the same side of the transversal and inside the parallel lines. So there are only two pairs of these. So three and six are same side interior angles and four and five are same side interior angles. Supplementary angles and same side interior angles, those angle relationships will both add to 180 degrees. And same side interior angles will add to 180 degrees when you have parallel lines. Supplementary angles always add to 180 degrees. So let's do some examples. 
pictured here, I have two angles that are on the opposite side of the transversal and they are on the inside of the parallel lines. So these would be alternate interior angles. Recall that alternate interior angles are equal. So if we are given that this angle right here is 110, then question mark will also be 110. Next, we have two angles here that are on the opposite sides of the transversal and are on the outside of the parallel lines. So these are alternate exterior angles. Recall that alternate exterior angles are equal. So if we're given that this angle right here is 115 degrees, then question mark will also be 115 degrees. Next, we have two angles here that are at the same position along the transversal and at the same location at each intersection. So these angles are corresponding angles. Recall that corresponding angles are equal. So if we have that this angle is 70 degrees, then question mark will also be 70 degrees. And next, you should recognize this angle relationship. We have some crossing lines and they are opposite each other. So these two are vertical angles. Vertical angles are equal. So if we are given that it's 60 degrees, then question mark will be 60 degrees. Next, you should also recognize this angle relationship. Those two angles form 180 degrees. They are supplementary angles. And since they do add to 180 degrees, you to find question mark, you do 180 minus 110, and you get 70 degrees. Last, we have these two angle relationships, that these two angles that are on the same side of the transversal, and they are on the inside of the parallel lines. So they are same side interior angles. Same side interior angles also add to 180 degrees. So to get question mark, you do 180 minus 120, and you would get question mark to equal 60 degrees.